Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, there was a gunshot at the time that Larry claims. God damn. Order, order. Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. Hmm. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots, separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh-oh. Oh, I'd better think of something quick. Eh. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. <laughs> What's wrong, Nick? I have it! I have it! Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. Wow, this is just like how... <laughs> how the freaking clock came up in the first two cases. Like, oh my god! These two cases coincidentally had the same unifying thread to them. What do you mean? Maya! Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm gonna run with it. Right. I mean... Is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. Uh... You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor! You... yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. The bad thing is, I'm not exactly sure, although, hmm... I... I, I, I guess the Steel Samurai case... They, they framed when the murder happened. Like, they, it happened earlier than initially thought, and they framed this happening somewhere else, like, later. Maybe, like, yeah, that actually, is that what, is that what we're going for here, is that, um, Hammond was already killed at 11.50, and the events at 12.15 were all some kind of cover-up? But how does Edgeworth, again, relate to this? I mean, why won't he tell us what the hell is going on? Uh, okay, well, I don't know, let's... But that seems like the obvious answer, right? That the murder already happened 11.50. Yeah? So let's go. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? <laughs> so, you finally realized the truth? There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night. But it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. <laughs> Listen, Rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. Uh, 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 uh. I wish we could interrupt him here like, are you sure about that? This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. Well, I don't... Technically, we don't even know that, because the photo, the faces are obscured. I, I guess they picked up Edgeworth from the boat? So we know he was on the boat, but, you know. Look at me, look at me. I'm keeping up here, I'm keeping up here. Way better than some of the, like, really tricky ones in the Steel Samurai case. And honestly, that very first case with the passport thing, like, honestly, I'm like, I'm, I'm starting to have a pretty good handle on the important plot points here. We'll see what curveball they throw of, like, something that, you know, the game has, like, made me avoid noticing and, like, it's, like, super crucial to the case. But, like, it's, like, cleverly diverted me from paying attention to that factoid. We'll see. We'll see what happens. 
But for now, I'm feeling pretty happy about how this is going. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well? So was that confirmed? I, I guess that was confirmed. Lada saw the person falling out of the boat, so that's mysterious. The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. Huh? What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? See what I mean about the whole belaboring? Like, you know. But, you know, I, I guess it's kind of fun to see. Like, again, like I said. Like, when you work this shit out, it's nice to kind of stretch it out to be like, yeah, yeah, let me drive my point in. We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. Oh, once again, I'm a little surprised that, again, they don't give us, like, any player agency here to, like... Again, no, this would have been a great moment for one of those multiple-choice things, but... Okay, sure. I guess it's because it's it's so glaringly obvious they assume that they don't have us do it. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. <sighs> Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. Um... Yikes, this one I'm not even sure about. Um... If we assume that neither of those guys are Hammond, then it would have to be Edgeworth and the murderer. That's the obvious answer. The one point, the one point I'm thinking is, but it's so ludicrous that I don't think it's possible, is that the guy on the left is Hammond, but he's already dead in this picture and he's been propped up to get shot. In which case it could be the murderer and Hammond. But, like, that looks too much like... I, I... I don't... But if it was the murderer in Hammond... If it was the murderer in Hammond, it could have been... Like, the murderer could have done that. They could have set the body up and done all this whole charade and then somehow get Edgeworth on the boat. So it's one of these two. Oh my god. I'm gonna go with this is somehow less convoluted. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. Oh, shit! Right, that would explain why Edgeworth hasn't, um... Why Edgeworth hasn't, uh, at all... Oh my god, my head's exploding here. Why Edgeworth hasn't, like, um... Like, like... Why Edgeworth has not, um... What's the word? Like, contested. That's right. Why Edgeworth hasn't contested Hammond being on the boat? Okay, so Edgeworth is on the boat with a person he thought was Hammond. So does that mean that the murderer... Oh my god, I, my, my head is spinning here. Like, the person getting shot maybe is Edgeworth? Like... Like this picture. Like, maybe the murderer is the guy with the gun and... The guy on the left is Edgeworth, and the murderer tried to kill Edgeworth as well, that would explain. But then, like, there's the fact that we know that um, one person was shot and fell into the lake, and as far as we know, Edgeworth wasn't swimming in the lake. 
do we know that? I don't know. Oh my god, but this is crazy. Oh my goodness. This, I, this... Well done, game. After me seeing so many things now, this one, again, was a good, good curveball. I did not even think about the bad guy being disguised as Mr. Hammond. That's what Phoenix meant by this being tied to the Steel Samurai thing. By, um... By uh, freaking having, first of all, uh, Jack Hammer being disguised as a steel samurai, and then the killer, uh, Ms. Vasquez, disguising him as the evil magistrate. Oh, man. Good, good stuff! Wh what? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. Hmm. I'm not sure what to make of all this. <laughs> Ludicrous! Oh, is that a little hesitation I hear in your voice, Von Karma? And we've worked out a little kink in your, um... That's not the right word, is it... Is it chink in your armor? Kink in your... Uh... Actually, both of those words sound really bad. Never mind. Have we wor worked out a weak point in your armor defense? Hmm. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... We don't know. I have no clue who the murderer is. I think that's the correct answer here. This time, go big or go home is not gonna work. Like, <laughs> what? Edgeworth killed the real Robert Hammond and then got on the boat with a fake Robert Hammond? <laughs> what? That's not how it's gonna work. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You, you don't know? Bah! Again you waste my time! I don't know because he never told us! Who? Huh? The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop! That old man! Oh? Uh? Okay? And this is the correct choice out of those three? I, I mean, I guess, yeah, the, the other, other two are really stupid as well. Again, Edgeworth and Ms. Hart being the murderer, those are really dumb. But the old man is the killer? At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? So if he is Yanni Yogi, why would he want to kill Hammond? Hammond is, like, the guy who bailed him out. Wh where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go... Blah, 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 blah. That was a bad line read if there ever was one. Let's try again. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not on a boat? Yeah, I mean, yeah, honestly, haven't we already kind of figured, at least not on the boat in the picture. <laughs> what? Well, well, then, where did the murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. Well, this one I'm not 100% sure on, but I'm going to say it was here? At his shop? Here, of course. The boat shop, where he lives. That way, he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. No, that's Larry looking for the balloon. <laughs> that night, he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to hear... <laughs> Let's try that one again. <laughs> you can tell this is the latter part of my recording session when I'm starting to flub my lines. Like an amateur! You know, which I am, so yeah. <laughs> then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. 
He heard a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. I was thinking of that myself as well, actually, when we were looking at that map for a moment. Um, I was thinking, like, well, I guess if Larry was on the boat, he would have been, like, over there at the dock when that happened. Like, that's, I think, what he said. So, yeah. I was just more, like, correlation of that's the boat shop guy's house. So, makes the most sense. And, yeah, that also was what Phoenix said. So, hmm. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop! <laughs> Mr. Wright! What happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Uh, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. Okay, this is a little scary. I guess now the multiple choices come. Maybe that's why there weren't any earlier. Because they're like, oh boy, you like multiple choice? We are about to get Satic Sam on your ass, boy. <laughs> All right. Mm. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop. That was a weird enunciation from me, honestly. The caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Holy shit, Hammond is not looking great there. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then... Who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Was it the boat shop caretaker? Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth. On purpose. Wait a minute. He yes Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Because he's trying to frame Edgeworth. Ah, uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Height. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. To create a witness? Because the first shot missed? Oh god, this one I'm not even sure on. <sighs> I think it's to create a witness. He wa I, I'm gonna go with that. I feel my, my gut says that's the answer. I think I, I'm, I'm going with the idea that the, um, the caretaker wanted to frame Edgeworth. Now, if he wanted to frame Edgeworth, he couldn't right kill the guy. So let's try to create a witness. That would explain why Edgeworth thought that he shot himself. If indeed what happened was he shot a couple of times and then jumped in the lake himself. So I guess. I guess that theory about we know that the guy who was being shot at jumped in is is a bust. Like it was the shooter himself who jumped in the lake. That, that would explain why Edgeworth was so confused by the gunshots at that moment. So, okay, let's go to create a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness. Also, man, the... Caretaker is looking way less fun in this picture. Look at how freaking intense he looks. <laughs> freaking, that's really spooky. The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Ms. Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next! The murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then... Right. I guess I haven't been paying enough attention to this shot all the time. It doesn't really show who is doing the shooting, just that one figure jumps into the lake. So yeah, indeed, it was the shooter who jumped into the lake. Good shit, good... Man, they did a good, like, uh, misdirection with that. Because by this time of the game, you as the player are starting to be 
careful for misdirections, but this was subtle enough that it got me. Well done, game. 10 points. The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. And then Edgeworth picks it up and looks shocked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I kind of suspected was what was going on as soon as we were like, it's not Edgeworth who did the killing. Then why was he holding the pistol? Because the pistol was left by the murderer and like an idiot, he grabbed it. Yeah. Hmm. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body. And threw the body into the lake. Oh right, of course. Yeah, the, the actual body that is discovered needs to be wearing the coat. So he had to kept it in his shop. Yeah. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Now, let's see what happens, because I think this is still quite a bit of conjecture. <laughs> let's not kid around here. Uh-oh. Bailiff! Bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker. Quickly! Oh, boy. Moment of truth time, y'all. Yeah? Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Oh, cool. Edgeworth is up there. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? <sighs> What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? Uh, I'm... Sorry, I can't say what it was. It has to be something to do with DL6, obviously. Like, maybe Hammond was going to apologize for DL6 or something, you know. But that's obviously what it has to be, right? Anyway. Hmm. Uh, your Honor, sir? Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. Uh, the witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? Uh, what should I do? F find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Oh my god. Wow, did we actually crack this case that easy? So it was the boat shop guy. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. <sighs> A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Yeah, I mean, as much as I want to be like, we cracked the case. That was a lot of conjecture from Phoenix. So I think we do have to grill uh, possibly Mr. Yogi, the boat shop guy, on... Why did you do it, man? Why? He bailed you out, assuming you are Mr. Yogi, you know. <laughs> Am I understood? <clears throat> One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. <clears throat> very well, court is adjourned. Damn! We did it! We did it really swimmingly on the second day of this super hard case. 
that went I'm so happy with that my only snafu was that beginning of the episode where I accidentally misclicked and used an item <laughs> we don't count that do we oh no 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 oh man so anyway let's freaking carry on December 27th 1.22 p.m. district court yay Nick you did it yeah well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. <laughs> That's kind of funny, kind of poking fun at the game's own, like, sense of drama. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. See, that's funny because she's actually been on trial, so that's really funny. Hey, Edgeworth! <sighs> uh, Mr. Edgeworth? Oh, d did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably gonna get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax! <sighs> I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. Well, what do you mean? Right? There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh my god, he is the killer! That's gonna be the twist! We're defending the actual murderer! Oh my god, please don't tell me that's the twist. No. There's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... <sighs> uh... I can't make up my mind. <sighs> what is this about, Edgeworth? Uh, it's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? Oh shit, oh shit! Oh no, no! I joked about this, you can't do it seriously! A memory? Of a murder. No! No, you can't after I made all those jokes about this! Like, just... <laughs> That's gonna be a twist that he's the murderer, right? <laughs> you can't! No! It's gonna be the freaking... He murdered his... What? No! Oh! Florgan! We'll see you next week because... Shit!